This is Working Wooden Planes. I'm Abraham. I take antique planes and get them back into working condition. Okay, let's do this. Today we are working on rabbit planes uh, or rebate planes. If you're from the UK, uh, both mean the same thing. We're not doing any restoration really today. Um, this is mainly a how-to video for working with um, wooden bodied rabbit planes, uh, how to use them, how to set them up. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance to use a couple different types. Um, the rabbit plane uh, cuts a rabbit joint, which is a basic um, furniture or cabinetry joint. Um, this is an illustration from Garrett Hack's uh, the hand plane book, which is a real excellent book. Um, uh, you can cut them with a cirque saw, you can cut them with a table saw, you can cut them with a router, um, uh, you can cut them any number of different ways. Uh, using a wooden body uh, plane takes a little bit of practice to get it right, um, but uh, is a very viable option for any woodworker. Um, so rabbits have this um, very distinctive escapement, this very um, iconic half of a heart shaped um, uh, escapement. I think they're really beautiful. Um, allows for the ejection of shavings. Um, they come in two different types. They have one as with either with the skew iron uh, or the other one with the square iron. Um, they're notable also because of the only plane in which the iron extends all the way to the sides of the body um, on either side. Um, lots of different shapes and sizes. This one is boxed um, to prevent uh, overwear on the bottom or on the sole of the plane. Sometimes the boxing is just in one corner or the other. Uh, this is a slightly unusual one. It's got a closed tote. Um, This one is a huge plane. It's called a jackrabbit. It's the size of a jack plane. Um, it's got those knickers to help cut the wood fiber um, before the iron gets to it. Um, they are they come in very narrow sizes, down to like three eighths of an inch. Um, they come in very wide sizes, up to like two inches wide. Huge. Um, they are, you can have um, compass rabbits, um, circular rabbits. You can have co coach makers or, co um, yeah, coach makers uh, rabbits. You can have very small rabbits. And you can have teeny, teeny, tiny rabbits. If you follow the Instagram account for this, uh, this YouTube uh, channel, you'll have seen me already post a little bit about uh, this little this little guy and using him, uh, and we will get another chance to do that today. So we're going to be focusing on two different um, planes today: one with a skewed iron um, and one with a square iron. Um, one of the things that you need to make sure, along with having a, an iron that's in good condition. Um, the other thing that's really critical for a wooden rabbit is that the right side of the body um, is perfectly flat so that it can lay flush against the wall of the rabbit joint when you're cutting it. Um, having a high point at the um, toe and at the um, heel is okay, um, but any bumps um, or wavery bits in between is not is not going to work. Um, it's going to screw up your joint. Um, so it looks like this one has high points at the front and the back, which is okay. And this one does as well. So for an example of how to clean up a body that has um, high and low points, we'll, we'll use this as our demonstration. Uh, and I think this guy is okay as well. Yeah.
to flatten the side of the of the plane, um, you just need another plane, and you're going to take a knockdown. In this case, towards the toe. And obviously, going to make sure you're only taking off a little bit um, and then rechecking with a straight edge to make sure that you're at the correct depth. Now, obviously, we've taken off um, a lot of the old patina, um, so it's up to you to decide how you want to deal with that cosmetic issue. Um, you know, sanding the entire thing so it matches that might be the might be a good option. Or because this is just a worker, a user plane, a working plane, um, you may decide to leave it as is. Uh, it's purely cosmetic; uh, doesn't affect the the handling of the plane. So, like we always do, um, I'm going to drop these irons into some vapor rust. We're going to clean them up. As with any iron, you're going to want to flatten the back. Now, with this skew iron, um, because of it, it is at an angle, you can't use a normal honing guide, so you're going to have to do it freehand, uh, which is pretty easy. And the obligatory shaving of the hairs. So let's put this to work. Um, so taking a marking gauge, just going to choose an arbitrary width. I don't know what is that, half inch, five eighths maybe, I don't know, or not five eighths, three eighths, something like that. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that your guide mark um, is very pronounced because um, you're going to need to use that for the first few cuts that you make with the rabbit um, plane. Um, and I'll show you what that means here in a second. Along with this uh, mark, we'll mark the depth of the cut. So to set up this plane, uh, very self-explanatory. Um, iron goes in, wedge goes in. Um, like with any other plane, um, you're gonna make sure that the iron is advanced down towards the tip of the mouth. Um, you'll set the wedge and advance the iron. Um, the thing that you wanna make sure is that your um, iron is flush or even slightly proud on the right side uh, of the of the right side of the plane. Um, if it's twisted or if it's adjusted too far to the left, um, you're not going to get a really clean cut into the uh, corner of the joint. Um, or for that matter, the wall of the joint will be off as well. So um, once you have the iron advanced enough and it's set in the body um, appropriately, then for your first cut, you're not gonna cut with the... Um, so for your first pass, um, you're gonna angle the plane so that only the right tip of the iron is running along your guide mark. Um, you're not going to cut with the entire width of the iron just yet. You're going to make two or three passes, maybe four passes, with the whole plane angled. And what you've done at that point in time is you've created um, a little bit of a fence for the plain iron to push up against now and the body to push up against now. Um, so once you have that, you're going to level out the, the plane and start planing as you normally would. The other thing you're doing at the same time though is you're using the fingers on your left hand to 
reach underneath the plane um, and also create a little bit of a fence um, that's doing two things. One, it's making sure that the plane is not um, going too far to the right. Um, and second, it's also helping you keep the plane level, um, that the floor of the joint is um, level and not twisting to one side or the other. So one of the hardest parts um, of using a wooden rabbit um, is keeping the floor of the joint um, perpendicular to the wall. Um, and that requires some practice. Um, it's much easier if you are using a philister with um, a fence and a depth gauge. Um, or if you're using a metal body a rabbit plane that has those same things. Um, so with a wooden body one, with just a simple rabbit, um, it does require some, some, some practice to get to where 100% um, of the time you know that you're um, perpendicular with the, that the wall and the, and the floor are both perpendicular with each other. All right, so now that we've done uh, square iron with the grain, we're going to use a skew and go cross grain. Um, just like with the um, other plane, um, we're going to make sure that we have a well-established guide mark for us to start on. We're going to angle the plane a little bit. And once we have this well established, we can simply plane that down to whatever depth we want. So there you have it, uh, two rabbit joints, um, pretty straightforward. It's a simple joint, um, obviously very useful and starting point for a lot of other stuff, including using rounds and hollows. Um, it is one of the more difficult ways of doing it. Um, using power tools is probably much easier, um, but it can be done and is I mean, honestly, not that hard. So I was going to go through and use a bunch of the different um, rabbit planes that I have and, and just to see how they all worked, but it got kind of boring after a while. So I figured I'd pick the biggest plane and the smallest plane and use them both. Um, this, God, this thing is huge. I uh, love this thing. Um, kind of, kind of unusual. Um, a rabbit this size that's shod. Uh, it's got those knickers. Um, like I said before, it's used to cut the wood fibers um, as you plane. Uh, the only problem was is, as I mentioned, these planes or these um, plane bodies will twist over time, and this one. Uh, has twisted so badly that I could not get the iron to sit um, flush with the sole of the plane. Um, so I was getting the floor of the joint was completely skewed off. Uh, it was not perpendicular at all to the um, here I'll, uh, to the wall at all. Here I'll show you. Um, really, the only way to fix this is to regrind the iron to match the angle of the sole or to match the angle of the throat uh, and I did not want to put that much time and energy into this um, 
So fortunately, um, that was not the big, was not the success that I was hoping it would be. Uh, but from there, let's jump to the to the tiny plane. Um, let's jump to the little finger plane, and we will uh, mark like a third of the plane, something like that, um, and transfer that to our wood. Transfer that to our board. Um, and just like with the other planes, we're just going to try and set the right side inside that uh, mark. And I think just because it was so tiny, it's, it was really difficult to use. Um, not really difficult, but uh, I think because it's so lightweight, it's hard for it to um, maintain the friction it needs to cut. Uh, sort of continuously, if that makes sense. Needs a little bit of adjustment. Um, but once we get that, we are ready to go. So rabbit planes, uh, hopefully that was a good uh, maybe introduction to rabbit planes, um, maybe a refresher. Um, simple plane to use, simple joint. I had fun making this video. I hope it was fun to watch. If you do like it, uh, hit subscribe, um, hit the like button. Thanks for watching and goodbye.